Hello again everyone, it's me, Matt. Thank you so much for being here today, I really appreciate it. Well, today we are talking about grenade machine guns. I've talked about them a little bit in the past before, especially with the AGS-30, and if you want to go check out that video, go check on the little link above. But we're today talking about the 40mm projectile that's used across most standard NATO grenade machine gun platforms, particularly the Mark 19. Now, the grenade machine gun has been a dominating weapon system in the modern battlefield. From the incredible Mark 19 40mm system from the west, which we see in this footage, to the AGS-30 from the east, they provide huge amounts of close-in suppression and firepower to mounted and dismounted troops. But many have asked me, Matt, do you think they should make the rounds larger? Is the 40mm, for example, enough? Now it is a rather interesting question, one I have actually asked myself a few times. I have first hand used the Mark 19 grenade launcher known as the GMG in the British Army and it's an incredible bit of kit. I was always amazed at how quiet it was when you fired it and the little to no recoil it produced. Sadly I wasn't the best shot though, but when you're lobbing 40mm rounds sat behind something that has the sights nearly as tall as the Empire State Building, there is some room for error. The 40mm projectile is very useful and a very practical round for combat use and many nations have capitalised on its firepower to provide fire support in battles for many years in both the past and to come. Let me put it this way, I've never heard of anyone or researched of anyone who has not felt its blast damage or capabilities not being effective on the battlefield. They have nothing but praise and happiness for this weapon system. That doesn't mean though that it's perfect. A lot of people think that some weapons have a renowned use for its length of service and if it quote isn't broke then don't fix it unquote. But you would be surprised to hear that most people I speak to regarding the Mark 19's little cousin, the M203, is actually regarded as not that great. It's been around for a long time and as many people of the weapons that we rely upon today have really extended their service life. The M203 for example, it's bulky, heavy and sometimes quite prone to actually failing and falling off or in some sort of malfunction. Now yes it does give the infantry the ability to launch 40mm grenades into the teeth of enemy troops. But are we missing something extra that we could be utilising? Is the 40mm enough for today's suppressive firepower? Now we can't compare apples to oranges from the underslung personal weapons to a grenade machine gun which is normally mounted or tripod mounted with some sort of fire team that attaches to it. But we have to understand that the 40mm round has basically been used since the 60s. Now yes I know many other projectiles have been used for even longer. But we're looking at quite a specific projectile, something that's quite customizable too in its use. We have to understand though also that this is why people love the 40mm. Now the individual use of the 40 by 46 mm cartridge is the NATO standard cartridge that's modern and common in the military world of today. This type is meant for use in handheld grenade launchers such as the M79, the M203 and the M30 MGL and features a casing with a high-low system which makes that gorgeous, well, popping sound as it leaves the tube. This is because the propellant has a low pressure composition and gives the projectile an average velocity of around 78 to 84 meters per second or 256 to 276 feet per second depending on the ammunition type. The round was designed for the M79 grenade launcher which is a single shot, shoulder fired, break action grenade launcher that fires the 40 by 46 mm grenade, which uses the US Army calls the high-low propulsion system to keep that recoil force low and first appeared during the Vietnam War with huge success. This is the same weapons platform that was used on Terminator 2. Of course it did though, it was very useful in Vietnam. It was there to be able to put a hand grenade basically in a bunker, pillbox or even trees for in distances from 75 to 375 meters in 25 meter increments. Perfect for an environment where you don't want to get close to charging guerrilla warfare troops or traps where carrying larger mortar setups would hinder troops trekking through the hellish jungles of Vietnam. 
But this round, although extremely effective, is being asked a lot more today than it ever has been before in its past. With new armor types, new active protection systems, longer standoff ranges and more effective tactics have really started to take its toll on the round in its underslung format. That's why the grenade machine guns become even more apparently needed in the modern battlefield and why new tech is being adapted to the machine guns to make them a lot more effective. But the round itself still is not actually changing. Why is that? Well, it's probably not going to come much of a surprise to you that it's quite simple. Firstly, cost. To design a heavier, larger and more powerful round capable of larger blast or damage effectiveness would cost governments and militaries around the world a lot of money. The 40mm is kind of like a preferred smartphone that you use. The iPhone for example, which is sadly the one I use. Lots and lots of people use them and enjoy their use. They're effective and useful and tend to do exactly what you expect of them and from a smartphone. But let's just rhetorically say there was much better phone system out there. We all know that the new phone will need new accessories, will it connect to your vehicle's own audio system for example, will it need a new charging cable, you need to get more charging cables because you know one's never enough, will it work with Windows or Apple computers very well, do you need a new protective case, what about the time it will take to use to get used to all the new ins and outs of the operating system. It can be a deterrent to those who have invested time and money and effort into getting into use of, say, their iPhone. In the military, this is similar to the fact that those questions for the phone can be translated into such. Does the new weapon cartridge size machine gun need new mounts that don't fit my 40mm systems? How much will the new ammo cost? How much will it cost to retrain the new field force? Will the round be a abundantly available as the 40mm, will anyone else buy it and therefore be able to logistically support it if we have it in joint missions? This is a big part why the 40mm has stayed for the long haul. We've become addicted to its capability and the comfort zone of its logistics, cost, interoperability with other nations and reliant upon the defense company that sells them that the new tech will come out on the machine guns to update them and keep them in the forefront of grenade fire support. Whereas in reality, it's just easier to stick to the 40mm and the Mark 19 platform because everything there is already set up, the costs are already been incurred, and it's not risk. And when it comes to governments of today, risk in the defense sector is a big one. The gun itself, though, is one of the biggest reasons why it's locked in its size. But that's not saying there are not competitive alternatives to the 40mm, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. The second reason the 40mm round is here to stay is because it's undoubtedly a very effective round and has huge customization and fire support options. Let's go back to the beautiful Mark 19. The Mark 19 was originally developed to provide the US Navy with an effective river time patrol weapon in Vietnam. A product improvement program was initiated in the late 1970s resulting in the Mark 19 Mod 3. The M430HEDP or High Explosive Dual Purpose 40mm by 53mm grenade was slightly different rounds to the 40 by 46mm used in the personal role such as the M203. This round however will pierce up to 2 inches thick of armor and produce fragmentations to kill personnel within 5 meters and wound personnel within 15 meters of point of impact. When you think of those numbers, it makes you wonder why we're even having this conversation. That's pretty effective. Well, the problem is, this was a defined feature of the round that was designed to allow it to not engage anything more complex, such as composite armor, reactive armor, and most importantly, active protection systems, which if we're talking about actually putting these weapon systems against true hardcore opponents, you know fine well there's going to be active protection systems protecting against some of the targets that this was designed to destroy. Soft skin vehicles, armored personnel carriers and such. Now the M430 HEDP has quite the impressive kill radius of that 5 meters which is more than enough to destroy a bunker or a pillbox crew or a lightly skinned vehicle. It does have a wound radius of approximately 15 meters, in which the world of grenades is actually quite capable. This is actually what you want in the higher number though. You want the wounding radius high. You're probably wondering why you want a grenade that wounds more than it does kill. 
Well, casualties on the battlefield add huge psychological and logistical strain upon its troops. The fact that troops could be screaming in pain in combat from shrapnel wounds is something that other troops just can't ignore. Reducing the combat capability of the troops around the surrounding area and gives them the ability to have to either extract or administer first aid. Grenade machine guns strike fear in trenches and fixed positions because people know that fragmentation is going to make much more of a mess of your flesh than a bullet wound going in and out or getting stuck inside of you. And it's safe to say that shrapnel is just horrible stuff and it really does play on your mind. It is basically turning your body into mincemeat and the 40mm does very well at doing so. But again, let's just say for hypothetical sense that a larger round, say 10mm more than the 40mm, could be provided giving double or triple the amount of damage. The fact is that very little variations to the 40mm round in size are out there in grenade launch capability. In fact, future weapons being developed are trying to go smaller. Based upon military analysis conducted from historical data, weapon characteristics and military forces feedback, American military research of DARPA had determined that the XM-307, which was a more modernized platform, was a weapon that the army did consider as a replacement for the Mark 19 in the future. Although this was recommended as a weapon, the XM-307 used the new 25mm ammunition that is not currently in use by any part of the US military, which was not accounted for in the cost-benefit analysis. The XM-307 offers some major advantages over the Mark 19, however the procurement cost of the weapon is significant. Furthermore, there are other alternative grenade launchers that were not analysed in this study which may have actually performed better than the XM-307. This is a strange scenario where not only the system was too costly, but the round was actually smaller, but somehow more effective than the Mark 19. So do we need a big projectile? Roll in the same old beast, but with some new claws from no other than General Dynamics, who also produced obviously the Mark 19. In comes the Mark 47 Mod Zero 40mm Advanced Grenade Launcher, which fires the same size grenades as the Mark 19 but also comes with a lot of advances to make it deadlier. One thing that the troops will like at least is that it's a lot more lightweight. The system also adds a new video site that adds laser range finding and night vision, allowing for better target acquisition. Perhaps the deadliest accessory for the Mark 47 is the Mark 285 Grenade. This is an airburst ammunition much like the 25mm rounds fired by the XM25 Punisher. How does it know when to airburst? Well, it's programmed with data from the advanced site. So maybe the bigger projectile isn't the way to go. Maybe it's smarter. But it doesn't change the fact that we are still using that 40mm round that is keeping most of its effective ranges and blast radius the same. I'm surprised actually when you think of the future of the grenade machine gun that we are not expanding the size of the round. Now many will argue, Matt, that's why we have mortars and crew serve weapons like the 25mm Bushmasters etc etc. But in my eyes, if that's the case, then you are looking at using a purely straight velocity round for precision shooting from a vehicle with a chain gun, or setting up a mortar crew with an added challenge of fire discipline, firing data for fire missions, and the reduced effect of the number of rounds downrange at any one time. Each weapon platform has its uses, and in my eyes the grenade machine gun is there for prolonged and overwhelming firepower that can create such a quick deployable beating zone of high explosive that the larger crew served weapons or mortars cannot capitalize on as effectively. That's why the 40mm makes up the middle ground of fire support, but I feel as if the round could be created slightly larger to increase the beating zone and suppression even more effectively. Will it happen? I doubt it. Sadly, as much as it would be interesting to see the data and ballistics of this hypothetical round, we probably won't be seeing it anytime soon. The addiction to the 40mm round is here to stay, and until someone creates something universal that can use both 40mm rounds and potentially a larger round, it seems as though the 40mm will dominate the grenade machine gun realm. But honestly, I don't really see it as a bad thing. The round is doing what is being asked of to great effect. My concern is that sooner or later the tech that is being added to the guns and for this projectile that fire them will not be enough to actually overwhelm the tech 
that is being added to defeat or defend against them. Thank you so much for stopping by on my video today. I really appreciate it. If you want to be notified of any upcoming content, please click the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of upcoming uh, videos that I produce. If you want to support my channel, please go check out my Patreon page and also my PayPal link is in the description box below, along with my Discord and any other social media that you want to follow me on. Thank you to everyone who has been contributing any donations or support to me and my page. It really does mean a lot to me, so I truly do thank you from the bottom of my heart. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.